What's up, everybody? This is Robert Ferguson, your nutritionist, a guy who shares because he cares, a.k.a. Roberto Lorenzo Ferguson. Oh, man. If you were catching me live, I'm so happy that you are here. I really am because we're just going to have a conversation. And my goal is to share with you some things that not everybody talks about. And I believe that it may be something that I share today. Or in this episode, even if you're catching the replay, they could be exactly what you were ready, what you were ready for. What, what, well, I guess what I'm, what I'm thinking is like, you know how you go to church sometimes and you're sitting there in church for those of you who have had this experience and maybe some of you have not gone to church and, or maybe you didn't have this experience. Maybe you're at a lecture or a seminar, or you go to some event or you meet someone and they share something that you were so ready to hear and it was that little bit of something that made all the difference you know what i mean it's um so that's what i'm hoping happens today because with so many people wanting to lose weight with so many people wanting to improve their health with more people ever in history living with metabolic chronic illnesses, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, maybe you're recently pre-diabetic, maybe you got dry eye and your eyes are starting to get worse and worse. The doctor told you recently that you have high cholesterol and we want to put you on a statin. Who knows what your situation is, but what I'm going to share today is primarily framed around losing weight. And, but this, this kind of like translates to all the other things, blood pressure. I mean, you name it. So I want you to, to just have a moment with me. Seriously, like just a moment. Like if you and I were just hanging out at your house, my house, we're at a coffee store and we're just having a conversation. You know, it could be just you and I, it could be me, you, and a few of your friends, but we're just talking because, well, let's just kind of dive into it. Uh, now, before I get in too deep, uh, let me invite you. We have a free newsletter. Uh, there's a link underneath. You can subscribe to it. Uh, you can always unsubscribe at any time. We don't sell your email. Um, we just provide information. So that includes recipes and maybe an article that I may write, or let's say there's a video that we put up and you missed it, then you'll be reminded when you get the newsletter. Um, success stories, you know, just, just information that we believe can be helpful to you. And then if you want to have a free consultation, which since I began making this available for people, people have been taking advantage of it. And I can tell you right now that the people who have taken advantage of the free consultation and they became my client or I pass them on to one of our other coaches, if I'm, if I'm full and I can't take on a new client, they're doing extremely well right now. And there's some people who I've talked to, and this kind of sets up where we're going, and they, they want to get healthier, but they don't decide to do anything. But at least they did do a free consultation. And the reason why I know they haven't done anything, because I follow up with people. And many of the people I follow up with, they're 10 pounds heavier, 20 pounds heavier, 30 pounds heavier. And they just continue to either procrastinate or skirt around what is necessary to help them get to where they most want to be. And, and I want to preface it by sharing with you a story. It's about one of my clients named Mary. I've been coaching Mary for about three years. And the title of this story that kind of sets up where we're going is called Something About Mary. Something About Mary. Now, Mary saw me do a post a few years back on Facebook. She scheduled a free consultation. We got on the phone. 
She's been wanting to lose weight for a while. She's 64 years of age. And she's 205 pounds. And she would give almost anything if she could ever get down to 150 pounds. So I talked to her. She is aware of my work. Um, I said, look, I can coach you. I had a, a, a program that she could afford. And we started working together. And I remember it like it was yesterday because it was it was either the first or second of February three years ago. So we started working in the very first month as she's learning how to eat keywords. She's learning how to eat. Most people are trying to lose weight, but they don't, they don't want or understand the importance of learning how to eat. So they look for diets. A diet has a start and an end. So they're not looking for a lifestyle. They, they, their gut says I want a lifestyle, but they're really looking for a diet. Unfortunately, even though their words are, I want a lifestyle. But almost everything that's out there is a diet because you have a start and then there's an end. It's not something you can live with for the rest of your life. So that, that helps right there. That, that's, that's important. So we get started. And the first 30 days, Mary loses three pounds. Now, keep in mind, she's not starving. She's not missing anything. She's learning how to eat. The weight's coming off. It's a little slow. She does have insulin resistance, a pretty high level of insulin resistance, which we helped her identify that when we started working. So we knew where we were and, and, and how we're going to make this work. But at the end of the first month, she's down three pounds. And I remember her complaining about being down three pounds because she felt like, you know, I thought I would lose more than this. Now, everybody's different. Some people lose seven pounds the first week. And keep in mind, we're not suffering. I said, you're not in pain. There's no over-the-top restriction. You're eating a lot of the same things you've been eating. You feel better? She was like, yeah, yeah. So, so she stayed motivated. So a full year goes by. And uh, we have a coach call. Mary calls me. And I get on the phone. I say, hey, Mary, guess what? She goes, what, Robert? I said, today's a special day. She goes, what's special? I said, it's our anniversary. I've been working with you for one year. She goes, wow. Now, for those of you who don't know how coaching works, think of this, right? Because when you're coaching someone, and especially a year goes by, you have coached them through a lot of fun times, a lot of disappointing times with life. People die. You see people get married. Uh, there's there's graduations. There's celebrations. There's vacations. There's uh, not good weeks. There's great weeks. There's holidays, Thanksgiving, Easter. There's fun events, Halloween. I mean, there's a lot. So you're coaching a person through all of that. And so I remind her of that. And I said, and today, when I got your numbers, Mary, you are 145 pounds. She goes, wow. She hadn't even really thought about it, right? Because she started at 205. The first month, she loses three pounds. A year later, she's 145 pounds. Her main goal was like, is it possible that I could get to 150 pounds? And I said, wow. She goes, man. I never really thought about it. I go, yeah, you're down 60 pounds and it didn't even hurt. Is You stayed consistent. You, you, you know, I know there was times you didn't want to call your coach, but you called and, and we worked through it and we were a team. And then there was other things that improved, but we're talking about weight loss today. I had a coach call with Mary uh, a couple of days ago. So I've been coaching her for three years. And she ain't letting me go. I can tell you that right now. Mary right now is 130 pounds. She doesn't want to lose any more weight. So that means she's down a total of 75 pounds. And three years has gone by. She is not gaining the weight back. There are no signs that that's going to happen. She has a coach. Whether it's me. And, and I'm hearing the same stories from my other coaches. So it's worked for her. And is working for her. See, when I go on social media, it, it's always amazing because I'll see people, you know, say, oh, yeah, I just lost 10 pounds. or I'm getting ready to lose 10 pounds. 
And usually they're selling a supplement or something, usually. And then six months later, that same person, oh, man, I'm getting ready to lose 10 pounds. Oh, I just lost 10 pounds. And it's like they post and they don't even realize that people are watching. Now, some people just want to be a part of a fun group, and I get that. They're not real serious about getting serious because if I've talked to them and they know me and they're and they are serious about losing weight because I am really good at what I do and my coaches are really good at what we do, we have an amazing methodology. So if I've talked to someone or I coach someone and and they're not being successful with whatever they're doing, they are choosing not to be successful. Now they could be in a horrible marriage. They may not like that, or they may be depressed, or they may just want to have friends. And, and so they're going to they're gonna choose things that give them fun in areas that they're missing. But they definitely are not taking their health that response. They're, they're not being that responsible because they're fully of, aware of what could help them, but they are choosing not to be helped. Or their ego gets into the way, and they feel like they should be able to do this on their own. That's foolish. But there's a lot of people that are stuck like that. So it's a psychological thing. I just happen to have a master's in counseling psychology, and it's a big part of everything I do and continue to do. So I get the whole psychology of it. And for some of you who are catching this, I'm speaking to you too. It's like get out of your own way and get real and get serious. Otherwise, every Monday you're going to start again. Then next year is like I'm going to do this again. Then you'll get frustrated again when you try to put on those jeans and they don't fit the way you would like them to fit. And you go, you know what? I should call Robert. You know what? Let me lose a couple pounds first. And you, uh, you procrastinate. This is just human behavior. Now, my point today is to share this with you. 95%, and this is real data. This is real stats when it comes to fitness centers. When people sign up and join a fitness center, 95% of those people will sign up and they will say, I am joining to lose weight. And 99% of those people do not lose weight. Like you can go to the gym every day. And if any of you guys go to the gym, you'll see the same people talking about losing weight. They'll be doing the same thing. And month after month after month, you will not see any changes. Many of them will actually gain weight. And this is why I challenge even coaches. I go, if you guys are stuck at a certain weight and you keep saying you're going to lose weight, what part of your life is blocking that from happening? Because if you're following the methodology, the way we teach people how to eat, the weight's going to come off, right? So let's say you're 175 pounds. And you say you're eating right, and a year goes by and you're still 175 pounds, but you're in the gym all that something's not adding up here. And with all of the things that I'm sharing, this is one of the reasons why a lot of people will go, you know what, I'm just going to, I give up. I, instead of learning and, be, and, and putting myself in a position with accountability, I am just going to go and take a weight loss drug. Because the weight loss drug does what? You're not hungry. It's a starvation diet. And then you got to go, well, I'll just do it for a little bit just to get some momentum. And then I'll get off of it and then I, I, I'll, I'll go. You know how many people say, I mean, it's amazing how many people take a weight loss drug because of that. They go, oh, I'm just going to do it for like, you know, two or three months and then I'm off. Unbelievable. What they're doing is there's a lack of humility. They feel like, okay, I can't do it. And I'm not saying willpower because if you've known me for 30 years, I've been saying it's not about willpower. Like when Oprah talks about, you know, willpower, I can't, don't count. Who's, who wants to count on that? It's because Oprah didn't know how to, she don't know how to eat. She don't understand how to eat. And the people that she's around don't know how to eat. I mean, in my last video, I talked about how on the Today Show, you had people say that coconut oil is the worst oil to cook with, and the best oils to cook with would be soybean oil. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? 
And it's the same people that were saying trans fats were okay in 2010. So again, for people who know me or they know our work and they say, you know, I'm going to do something else. Or I'm going to do something different. Hey, God bless them and good luck. And let's see how it works out. Because I believe six months will go by. They'll be the same. And they'll jump from this and jump from that. And I'm doing this now. I'm telling you, I'm down five pounds. I'm down 10 pounds. Okay, 10, 10 pounds of what? Is it fat weight? How are you ever going to get it if you don't know how to eat, you guys? Like, help me. Someone help me understand this. Like, once you understand what I'm saying, what's blocking these people? Now, there's many things that could be blocking a person, right? You could have a condition. That's why I don't judge people. When I see someone overweight or they say they've gained weight, I'd never judge them because you do not know what's going on in that person's life. Like my mom has survived breast cancer three times. And when I say, oh, yeah, my, my mom gained like 20, 25, 30 pounds, right? Then someone will go, well, I thought if your program's all that, Robert Ferguson, how's your mom gaining 25, 30 pounds? Well, the person who would make that comment is judging because they don't realize that if you survive breast cancer, oftentimes because of how the breast cancer treatment is, you could end up having lipedema. And oftentimes it's in the arms, and my mom got it really bad. She survived breast cancer three times. And with that, you're going to have retention of water. You're going to gain weight. Someone's thyroid may be completely off. And they're doing everything right. They could be eating everything right. But guess what? They're going to probably gain weight. So sometimes it's health related. So I don't judge anybody. That's why when you're coaching someone, you got to take it all in. Let me take it in. Let's see exactly where you are. Look at what medications they're taking. There's a lot of medications where the person taking the med doesn't know it, but we look it up as a coach. And one of the side effects is weight gain. They, be, they could be coming off certain medications or, uh, you know, some, some other steroid, for instance, and one of the side effects is weight gain. So you don't know. So it's important. Let's bring it all in. Let's, let's get a better understanding of what we are working with. And then you have so many people battling with insulin resistance, and they don't know, but we know. And to lose weight on a cellular level, it's going to take a little bit of work because we basically got to make over those cells and get the body working more efficiently on a cellular level. And that's not like, you know, you know foo food talk. That's real. That's real talk. So at the end of the day, here's what I believe. You know, and I see Sandy made a comment. She says, let me just touch on it. People want things fast. Yes, everybody wants things fast. Right? People want to save money fast. People want to grow a new business fast. People want to lose weight. Fast. I get that. People want a, a relationship oftentimes to, to unfold and, and become something bigger fast. And, I, and that's okay. I'm okay with people wanting weight loss fast. Like, I don't have a problem with that at all. And Sandy goes on to say that I know what it's like to go months without losing. Yeah. A person could go months without losing, but again, you're working on improving. Everybody's situation is different. Some people are going to consistently just drop, 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 drop and get there. Other people, looking at your life experiences on a cellular level, there's some things that need to be improved. And every time that person gets off track of what is helping to improve on a cellular level, they just set themselves back. Oh, I had some cake this weekend. Oh, I didn't get to work out all week. Oh, you know, my friend wanted to go and eat, and so we just had to indulge. Oh, and it's all these things, right, that they don't think about when I, like I share with the story of something about Mary. There's a, a whole year that goes by. There's a lot that you got to work through. There's so many things that are taking place. People dying. People like uh, kids getting sick. Uh, kids dying. Uh, cousin dying. Uh, friend, you know, is, is terminal. 
uh, another a baby being born. Like there's so many things. That's why it must be a lifestyle. Now, will I eat cake? Yeah, but I don't eat cake. It's not part of what I, it's not my, I'm not against people who eat cake. I just, it's just not something that I, I do. Uh, I love licorice. Do I buy it when I go to the grocery store? Uh, no. Every once in a while, I'll get some. My daughter likes it. And every once in a while, I may have one. But more than off, more, more often than not, it can sit in my house. I don't, I don't, I don't eat that. I don't want that. Now, there's other things that I want. And if they're in the house, yeah, I'm probably going to eat it. But the good news is that I live all alone, all by myself. So everything in my house, when I open up the refrigerator, when I open up the pantry, is all the things that I will eat that are good for me, that are helping me, but they're convenient. I don't put ice cream in the refrigerator because I like it, because I know I'm going to have an evening where I'm probably going to want it. The only time I buy things like that is when I know my kids are going to be with me. So it'll be the day that they're with me or maybe the day before. Sometimes I'll buy it. Things that they like that I wouldn't keep in the house when I'm by myself because I would probably eat it. So I make it convenient for me to eat what is helping me. So at the end of the day, right, I would say a big part of how people can be success is aptitude, the ability to comprehend, to learn. Like there are people that I've coached and I thought that they were pretty smart. I just assumed they were smart uh, and they had a strong aptitude and Fast forward, I realized that they don't. They're successful in certain parts of their business, but they really don't learn quick. And because I assumed that they were getting what I was saying because they they their responses and feedback was, it seemed like they were getting it. But I didn't realize that they really didn't get it. Now, I'm not saying they're dumb. They just, everyone's different. Everyone learns differently because they really didn't learn, right? So when I re-engage with some of these clients and they're like, well, you know, I really didn't understand how to make a fat burning meal. What? That's what I'm thinking in my head. And they really didn't. So I don't know when I'm coaching them on the phone, if they were multitasking, like I hear them saying, yeah, but maybe they're, you know, selling something or, uh, I don't know, doing accounting. But for whatever reason, they didn't learn and they didn't learn something that we have proven inside of 45 minutes that first graders can learn how to make a fat burning meal. We did a whole study on this. I think it was nine or 10 years ago when we took 60 first graders. I went in and did a presentation on how to make a fat burning meal. And at the end of the 45 minutes, they had to take a quiz and the quiz was pass or fail. And all 60 of the first graders passed. They all knew how to make a fat burning meal. Then when those kids left, we brought in all the teachers. You had teachers who were go still going through college, hadn't gone to college, uh, had a four-year degree. Some had a master's, some had PhDs. Uh, and then you had the faculty. 50% of those people, same presentation. 50% of those adults did not pass. And a part of that is that oftentimes people have so much baggage in their life, so much baggage psychologically, relationships, uh, baggage of diets they've done in their past, so they're always doing a comparison. They bring in all of that baggage, and so then they just push back with me the whole time. Like, I'll bring up oatmeal, and I say it's a fast carb. One lady raises her hand. Question. Now, the kids didn't do this, but the adults. Why is, uh, well, well, my question, Robert, is is still Coates oatmeal a, a fast fast carb? Because I know you said Quaker oatmeal, but what if it's still Coates? I said, no, all oatmeal is a fast carb. Well, what about brown rice compared? 
And it's all these questions because they bring in so much misinformation that they would block themselves from seeing the simplicity for what it is. Fascinating, isn't it? It sure is fascinating. It sure is. Well, here's the good news. Everyone, whether you learn quick or whether we have to go a little bit slower, everyone can learn how to eat. Everyone. And once you learn how to eat and you apply it, you're eating regular food just like everybody else, then you're able to be successful. And once you learn, then you know. And if the way you ate to lose the weight is the way you continue to eat for your lifestyle, there's no reason for you to gain the weight back. And we know this through the National Weight Control Registry. The data is very clear. They have been studying for well over 10 years now. People who have lost at least 30 pounds, upwards to 300 pounds, and are keeping the weight off. Over 90% of those people in this ongoing study said that the way they ate when they lost the weight is the way they continue to eat. And that's why they, they don't gain the weight back. What I just said, man, that's a game changer right there. It says that how you lose weight is how you're going to keep the weight off. So if, it, if a person said, I'm going to do keto, or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to count points, or I'm going to count calories, what you're buying into is I am going to count calories for the rest of my life, and I'm happy about it. I am going to do keto for the rest of my life, and I'm happy about it. And one of the things that makes us uniquely different is that we show you how to eat all foods. And eat them in a way that keeps your body in what we call a fat burning mode. And that's why I could look at Linda, who's down 120 pounds, and say, Linda's not going to gain the weight back because she really gets it now. I could say the same thing about Debbie, who went from 253 pounds to under 150 pounds. She ain't going back. And the way she's eating, she likes the way she eats. I could look at Brett, who went from 336 pounds to 199 pounds. He eats, he orders Grubhub and Thai food and, and different foods. But if he continues to make a fat burning meal, why would he gain the weight? He won't. The people who struggle and it takes the longer. Yes, insulin resistance is important, but a lot of those people play games. They roll in and out. They roll in and out of the methodology. And then they forget because they are good for two or three days as far as sticking to the methodology. And they forgot that they rolled out four or five days ago. And they really don't have a long strings of the lifestyle like happening. They're rolling in and out. And they're going, well, it's taking a long time. Well, I wish it could go faster. Uh, no, you don't roll in and out. It's like an alcoholic. Like, I'm going to, I am no longer going to be an alcoholic. So I'm going to go four days with no alcohol, and then I'm only going to drink on the weekend. Wait a minute. I thought you said you were done drinking. Well, you know, they're rolling in and out. The real benefits is when you can stay the course consistently is where you start to see bigger gains. Like one of my clients, I'm going to call her Lady H. Lady H. Lady H. She was consistent for a while, major level of insulin resistance. She would lose a pound some weeks, some weeks two pounds, and that was rare. Then maybe half a pound. And then one week she loses six pounds. I don't know where. Whoop. Then three pounds a week consistently. What is that about? She drops 50 pounds. And then I didn't get a phone call. She didn't schedule a coach call. 
Months go by, and I reach out to check on her one more time. She responds. We set up a call. We get on the phone. She's done gained all, all her weight back. What happened? Life got in the way. She rolled out. She rolled out of it. I, I don't know. You know, look, we're, you know, we're all learning. But my point here is when you look at people who say they want to lose weight and every week you don't see them losing weight. What's blocking them? What's blocking them? And eventually they will get discouraged and they'll just look for the next thing to jump on instead of being honorable to themselves and saying, you know what? I'm ready to learn how to eat. So that's why I tell people, when you're ready to learn, I'm here to help you. If you want to continue to be unaware or ignorant, then, you know, I can't really help you. But I can tell you what you're going to do. Because one, you're not going to feel good about yourself. You're not. And what happens is misery loves company. So you start to hang out with people and find yourself around other people who are thinking and feeling the same way as you. And then you have moments where oh, I got to do something. And then maybe one of those people get inspired. So you do what they're all doing. Only to realize, you know, what? I, I know better than this. And then you don't do it. And then you get those people who I have people that pay me. And then they disappear. They have a moment of I'm awake. I'm going to do this. I'm ready. And then it's like pulling teeth to get them to do the first call because they get in their own way. And one of the saddest parts about a lot of those people is that they say they're Christians. And don't get mad at me. I'm just telling you guys the facts. You know, like there's a lot of people who are Christians, but they don't go out and say, hey, I'm a Christian. And it's always they always make comments about Christianity and, and, and quoting the Bible. But yet. They can't even follow through and, and, and get the ball rolling. At that point, I'm and I'm not judging them. I'm thinking, well, hell, why don't you pray about it? Why don't you go and use the sources that you keep telling everybody else about and the scriptures you keep posting on Facebook? Why don't you tap into one of those scriptures and to help you get, get going to do for you what nobody but you can do? I mean, I learned so much from the late, great Jack Lang. We actually had a conversation about this. And, and he was really, he was funny as he would talk about it. Because he says, a lot of people just say, you know, I'm going to give it to God. Or, you know, I'm, you know, I was like, what? You got to do it. You have free will. Now, you can lean on God. And you can get support and encouragement. And you can re re renew your mind daily. But you must do it. Yeah, God's in your corner, but he's waiting on you to go. What are you waiting on? Go, go, get up, go. I mean, I had this client who was so funny. I would talk to her and, you know, she was going through it. She had lost her husband and, and that's always a sad thing, right? And um, she wants to lose some weight. And every time I would have a coach call with this lady, she would always say, you know, I'm never giving up, Robert. Because I would make comments or ask questions. She'd go, nope, not me. I'm going to see this through. Where is she? I don't know where she's at. She gave up on herself. Now, that could be depression. But she gave up. And a lot of these people give up until they have that next doctor's appointment. And they go in, and that doctor says, oh, we got to put you on statins. Oh, your blood sugar, you're, you're, you're no longer pre-diabetic, you're full-blown diabetic. Oh, your blood pressure's out of control. Oh, and then people get motivated. Hey, coach, hey, hey, listen, I want to get started. Because fear is controlling those people. And a lot of people, that's how they vote also in politics. Like fear will scare them and, you know, from voting for, for one of them or scare them to vote another way. Because they're not in a calm, peaceful place and be able to rationalize and make it a learning experience. These people who struggle and are usually uh, easily dictated by fear, 
in the words of Joyce Meyer, who wrote a book about this, great book, by the way. She talks a lot about how people are led by their emotions. And when you're led by your emotions, then you're on one week, you're off the next week. Because you're not, you have a hard time just being able to see things for what they are. You make decisions based on how you're feeling. You get all caught up in your feelings. You're led by your emotions. I'm going to call the coach because I'm feeling good. My numbers are down. That's led by the emotions. I'm going to do this, man. It's January 1st, man. Let's do this. Led by emotions. And emotions can be a good thing. It It can help you. It can fuel you, right? It's part of motivation. But when you're led by your emotions, be careful. Like, listen to those people, and we're about done. I'm, I'm about done. But listen to those people who say that they're an emotional eater. Oh, no, Robert, you don't understand. I'm an emotional eater. I remember being at a conference, and I was on a panel, and everybody kept talking about emotional eating. And when it came to me, the, the person who was the host said, hey, Robert, so what are your thoughts? You haven't said much about, you know, how you help your clients with emotional eating. I said, well, I don't believe in emotional eating. And the whole room got quiet. And you guys may be quiet right now. (laughs) You're like, what? He doesn't believe, I still don't believe in emotional eating. And you know, if you know me, you know I wouldn't say that if I couldn't back it up. The reason why I say that is because feelings always follow thoughts. Thoughts do not follow feelings. So I'm going to say it again. Feelings follow thoughts. Thoughts don't follow feelings. So when you first have a thought, let's say you find out something happened to your kid. They're in jail. God forbid they got in a car accident. Um, Once you find out that, That's a thought, right? Then there's a feeling. It's an emotional feeling. It could be very powerful. It's like sadness. Feelings follow thoughts. Thoughts don't follow feelings. You don't have a feeling of, I'm so happy, and then there's a thought. There was a thought that helped you become happy, happy. So if I was an emotional eater, What was the thought before that emotion? You guys, do you follow me? What is going on in your life? So feelings follow thoughts would say, I'm depressed today, so I'm going to eat. So then you call yourself an emotional eater. Yeah, but you're not. Okay, if you're an emotional eater, what was the thought that put you in a place where your feelings make you want to eat? So it's about the thoughts, you guys. And if you if you if you live in a in a world and you have a life where the thought is driving you to be an emotional eater, let's go back to the thought because there's some you're lacking some coping skills to deal with that, right? It's kind of like people who have a hard time with stress. Like some people, when they stress, they're stressing over something. Maybe the boyfriend breaks up with them. Now they don't eat, so they're not driven to eat they don't eat which is not good and then some people are driven to eat but it all began with a thought is my point so it's not like we remove the thought and you're just walking around living in emotions that would be an emotional eater but that's not the way it works feelings always follow thoughts thoughts do not follow feelings. Now you could disagree with what I'm saying, which is fine. And many of the people, when I was on that panel, they couldn't finally uh, completely get what I was saying, but they couldn't totally discount what I was saying. Because there's no moment where what I just said is not true. And this is the psychology of weight loss. This is what I 
teach my coaches in training. This is what you don't get when you just take a regular, you know, health coach, you know, I don't know, certification. The psychology is usually missing. That's why a lot of these coaches have a tough time meeting people where they are. And part of that is that they lack empathy and compassion, right? To be able to see things from that side of it. Like I can tell you right now who's a good coach just based on their, their political views. Like what, like there's some people who will look at me and how I live my life and just assume that I'm a conservative Republican. That's their assumption of me. Other people would look at my skin and the fact that I'm, you know, black African American and they would go, Oh, he's far left. He, he's got to be a liberal. And I, and I'm, I'm really not either one of them. I have, views and my beliefs i have a moral compass and if that moral compass because let's say i don't believe in um if you're married and having sex with someone outside of being married well today that's considered conservative it is um I believe in God. That's considered, I have Christian values. Like that's my, my, that's a big part of my moral. So that is considered on the right. But I know people on the left, you know what I mean? So there's just so much to it. And so, so one of the keys in helping people as a coach is to don't judge, meet someone right where they are. Hear them for where they are. It's kind of like what I said early on. There are people who have certain medical conditions that play a huge role in why they gain weight. It's not lack of willpower. Nobody's there to shame them. This is just what it is. So in meeting someone where they are, as a philosophy, I know how powerful that is. And this is my point to you. Meet yourself where you are because losing weight is an inside job. And the more you can work on you and love you more and do the things that you know are going to help you and go as slow as you need to go so you can really comprehend what it is that's going to help you, then you got something that you can live with. So you can lose the weight, you can keep it off when the way of eating matches up with both of those processes. You eat as a process to lose the weight. The same way you eat to lose the weight is the same way you eat to keep the weight off. And when you have something like that, that works for you, then you got something that is going to work for you. That's called a lifestyle. And the good news as I close is we can all have that. We can all have it. Some of us are going to learn it like my clients in their 70s and 80s. At least they got it before it, you know, they checked out. Some people are going to get it much earlier. Some of us are getting it now. And I love being a coach because it gives me a chance to be a partner with people who want to win. And it's a game as I was talking to one of my clients this morning in her situation, I said, you're going to win. I'm very confident. And I said, you want to win? And she goes, no, I want to win. I said, so you have a coach and you're the team, right? It's your team. We both want to win and we're working together. The chances of us winning is pretty high. Now, it may not go as fast as we all want, which is nothing wrong with wanting it fast. I mean, we all want it fast. I mean, I had a pair of jeans I wanted to wear like three weeks ago. So my workouts have been just horrible. And it's not like I want to lose weight, but your body composition changes, right? So if I'm not working out, then things start to shift. So I go to put on those jeans and they did not fit the way I like those jeans to fit. Right? So, so the next day I was like, 
all right, I got to get these workouts going, man. This is horrible. So I worked out. And after the first workout, I tried the jeans on like, like that was going to do it. I mean, I know better. But then like three days later, I put on the jeans again. Seven days later, I put them on. On the 11th day, then they, they fit the way I remembered them fitting. It wasn't about me losing weight. I was like, I just hadn't been working out. And so I just needed to like tighten up a little bit and then the jeans would fit. And I knew that, right? I've been doing this long enough. I mean, I, and I just did it. So the food didn't change. I just had to pick up the exercise. Anyway, you guys, I'm Robert Ferguson. You know, I share because I care. And I just want to wish everybody a happy Saturday who catch it on Saturday, the live or the replay. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me uh, because you can win. And if you caught this in the middle or you're catching it at, at the end, Listen to it from the beginning because I believe I shared some real good nuggets. We definitely talked about uh, quite a few things that I believe all of us can relate to in one way or another. Okay, so much respect. Email me if you have any questions. Uh, remember, we have links there. Make sure you subscribe to our newsletter. And if you would like a free consultation, then please schedule that. And I look forward to meeting you and talking to you. Other than that, uh, let's keep it moving. And until the next one, I'm Robert Ferguson.